Well, good morning, everyone. This is uh, Chris with the Ancient Scholar. So today I thought I'd um, um, ask uh, one of those, those uh, esoteric questions that I uh, ask uh, uh, from time to time on occasion to occasion. And I think I kind of go back to the, the whole chemistry thing that I'd, uh, talk, I, I've talked about in the past, and I think it's a rather interesting question and uh, certainly something that uh, um, I've asked myself uh, many times, and I'm sure a lot of other people have asked themselves when they uh, start looking at electron configuration, uh, periodicity, and, and 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 kind of trying to, to try figure all that business out, and um, they ask, well, why why is it that I can only fit uh, two electrons in a in a certain orbital, uh, be it a, an s orbital or a px or a py or a pz orbital? Why why can I only fit two electrons in that orbital? The answer is probably going to take a few videos. A couple of videos at least, and uh, when it's all said and done, you're probably going to find the answer rather unsatisfactory. That it's not going to resonate well with you. It certainly doesn't resonate all that well with me, and, and to some extent, I, I can't explain the answer uh, simply because I, I, I lack the mathematical um, and physical preparation to do so. Uh, but we can at least look at it in a, in a qualitative sense. And that's what I'll, I'll try to do, and I'll try to, uh, to give us a little bit of, uh, more insight into, into what's going on here. So the first thing that we have to recognize is that um, when we, we look at the concept of an orbital, an orbital is um, not physical reality per se, uh, in that... An orbital is, is really something called a wave function, and I've talked about it in other videos. It's, it's a mathematical function that is some sort of physical description for the electron. It, 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 it's not really well known. It's, it's actually not known at all what liter the wave function literally means, if it means anything. Uh, currently, uh, to, to my knowledge, there really is no physical understanding or interpretation of the wave function. Uh, what we do is we actually will um, take something called a complex conjugate of the wave function, or we basically look at it as the absolute value of the wave function, and, and we'll square it. And uh, basically what that does is it takes out all, all the negatives, and um, what we get from squaring it, it can be interpreted as uh, the probability density. Um, for finding an electron. So uh, an orbital is not, um, is not a, a physical um, location of electron, if you will. It just gives us a high probability of, of finding an electron uh, in, in a certain area. And, and, and we arbitrarily define the space, and, and we generally arbitrarily look at, you know, Maybe in that one s orbital, you know, 90, 95 percent of the probability density of finding an electron. So all that, what I'm trying to get at is that the the an orbital isn't a, um, isn't a kind of a physical reality, if you will. So um, it, it's an interpretation of something called a wave function, and so, so far it appears to be the correct interpretation, um, but it's just an interpretation. And it's not a uh, literal. We we shouldn't take that as a as a as a literal. Uh, the electron is here, or it, or it isn't there. So when we really look at at how electrons and atoms are all that, it's 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 really not. Um, at least in my mind, asking where exactly the electron is is really not a great question. It's not really all that helpful. And, and perhaps this is more helpful to to ask. Well, what kind of energy? does this electron have? And that's actually a lot more helpful uh, when we talk about bonding and, and things of that nature. Uh, what, what kind of energy does, does the electron have? And, and, and I, I prefer to look at the electrons as, as inhabiting certain energy levels. Um, and that's actually what the, the principal quantum number, the N, you know, really tells us is, is the shell uh, um, energy levels, if you will. But be that as it may, uh, there is an energy component, orbitals, certainly have a certain energy associated with them because orbitals exist uh, within an energy shell. And uh, in a hydrogen atom, at least, in a one-electron system, 
the orbitals are what we call degenerate. Um, they all have the same energy. And that's not necessarily the case in multi-electron atoms because I have electron repulsion. Um, and in certain cases, the orbitals actually, I, I think, could be degenerate, such as, um, say, like on this, if I maybe had something on the surface of a neutron star, but I'm not quite sure that um, a proper atoms could, could exist. But I, I think in a situation like that where you know, perhaps a star is collapsing and I have an, a, just a, a massive amount of gravitational um, or a massive amount of gravity, gravity plays a big role, I, I could probably foresee, um, you know, because uh, prior to collapsing and all that, certain stars um, can actually stabilize in something that's called electron degeneracy, uh, where you have all these electrons basically being compacted into, um, basically into degenerate um, states. Uh, of energy, so I, I could see something like that occurring. Obviously, that's well outside of uh, what we physically experience. But going back to the question of why can I only fit two electrons in an orbital, I think it's important that we we understand what electrons are, or at least the the, the mathematics and the statistical mechanics that we use to describe the electrons. I won't actually go over the math proper, but I will um, just talk about how we look at at electrons. As, as opposed to other types of um, particles, and I use that word in a very broad sense, a very uh, nebulous sense. And, and really, what, what, when we look at something, and when we look at categorizing different particles, we have something called the standard model, uh, which is a, a reasonably good way of c categorizing particles and their properties. Um, obviously, I'm not you know, a high-energy particle physicist or anything like that. Um, but I'll go ahead and at least cover the basics of the standard model. So um, when we talk about the standard model, the standard model, we, we, we have basically two types of uh, particles um, that, that exist in the standard model. Um, we have something called fermions. Uh, and, of course, they're named after Enrique Fermi. Uh, Fermi Lab is also named after him. And then uh, we have something called a boson, or bosons. Bosons. So fermions and bosons. And um, fermions, in a, in generally, in a broad sense, are, are, are particles that have mass. And they're, they're the particles of, of our everyday existence. They're uh, things like electrons, uh, protons, neutrons, uh, the quarks, the quarks inside of the, 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 the up and down quarks that uh, make up the protons and neutrons and, and so on and so forth. Um, and then there, there basically are subcategories of, of fermions. Uh, there are basically light or low, really low mass particles like electrons or what we call leptons, and then your heavy particles made of quarks, like your uh, protons and neutrons, are what we call baryons. But they're all they all fall under um, a, a fermion. It's they're all fermions, and that's important to differentiate. Uh, bosons, on the other hand, are are massless particles. They have no mass or no rest mass. And they carry force. They are the force carrying particles. And uh, these are things like uh, photons, um, light, uh, light part particles of light, um, of course, that carry the uh, electromagnetic force. Um, gluons, which are carriers of the, the strong nuclear force and help um, hold uh, atomic nuclei together. Um, some theoretical particles like gravitons. Uh, which are supposedly uh, carrying particles for gravity. Um, I think there are uh, the, the Higgs boson, uh, which has to do with, with uh, uh, carrying uh, mass and, and all that. I'm not as uh, familiar with kind of all this theoretical stuff, but bosons um, are your uh, force carriers. They have no mass, and an example of that would be light. So again, the two major uh, types of particles that we have are the fermions and the bosons.